Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear students, a uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are and whatever time you listen to this set of lectures. Uh, this is the SWAM DTH uh, lecture series in the area as you can see, in the area of investment analysis and to portfolio management. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from IME department at IIT Kanpur. So, this will be the 19th lecture. And if you have seen the syllabus, the overall uh, coverage will be in the area of options uh, and uh, different type of options we consider and how different type of concepts of interest rates and all these things would be uh, covered. Now, as I tell for each and every small lecture series, the, the overall area coverage is huge actually if you want to uh, cover the concept of options. Uh, considering the one hour lecture which I have, I will keep it to the basic minimum and fundamental concepts and obviously as we go on discussing many questions will, will arise and uh, obviously you can uh, find them in the book. Book I have which I have mentioned would be basically John C. Hull, a basic, very basic book and obviously if you find any, any more further interest in this subject, you can definitely write to me or, or search the net whatever in related information you need. So, as I said it was the 19th lecture of in the 30th, 13 number total number of lectures series in, in SWAM and as the title says investment analysis and portfolio management. Uh, what will be the broad topic and what would be the sub topics for this uh, one hour lecture, I will come to that and then I will go into the slowly into the details. The broad topic would be in options and what we mean by options is a part of the derivatives uh, concepts and how options are different from forwards and futures all these things would be slowly covered later on. But first in this one hour it will more of coverage of options and their relative concepts. The detail parts Obviously, there would be tertiary and sub sub levels of more discussions, but the broader areas would be options. What we call a long call or type of options, why it is a long call, the, the opposite party would be a, a long put and um, that if you remember in, in derivatives, it is basically called the long and short. So, you will have the long call, the long put, put and long being the opposite. Uh, sets of parties or sort of sets of individuals in a long position. They obviously would be a short position uh, um, which would be a short call. So, when I say long call and long put it do not they do not mean that they are going together. So, obviously why I am calling, call, calling long call or why the definition of a long call and short call is which they go together will become clear as we proceed. And obviously, if there, there is a short call, there will be a short put, short put will go along with the, the, the concepts of, of uh, the opposite party which we will um, slowly discuss. When I mean the opposite party, it can be of two types, what are those I am not immediately going to the definition, within few seconds or one minute I will come to that. What we mean by the European options we will discuss and, and how the European options are priced later on when we go into the options pricing, we will discuss that. But generally it will be the concepts that what are the different type of European options you have. We will also have the uh, discuss the concept of uh, American options. So, once the European options are discussed, you will understand the fundamental differences between the European options and the American op options and why they are different fundamentally depending on the time frame that will also be made clear to you as we proceed in the discussions. Now, 
if we consider the actual English meaning an option, option means what? Option means that it is given a choice that I exercise or do not exercise. So, if I am told that you can travel or you can go to this place or you can buy this thing, there is an option for you. So, depending on whether it is beneficial for me, not beneficial for me, I can basically exercise and take the option whether I want to basically go for the transaction, do not go for the transaction or whether I buy that product, do not buy that product. So, obviously, the underlying, underlying thought process which should be going in my mind is that whether it really benefits me, benefits me in the sense that whether monetary benefit is there, whether on the concepts of, of some giving me some utility, some value, whether it is positive or negative. So, obviously, if it is positive, it gives me some benefit and if the overall utility is positive, I will take that option, I will take that decision. So, obviously, the other side would be if it is not beneficial for me, I would not take that option. So, obviously, which means that option is basically a type of contract which does not force me to take the decision, but it only gives me the sets of information based on which I can take the decision whether to go for that or not go for that. So, now when we can consider an option, there are two types of options. One is a call option and one is a put option. So, call option is basically, call means you are calling, call all is basically uh, to buy a certain asset or a certain derivative based on that asset depending on some expiration date, that means when it will expire. So, it can be 3 months, 6 months, 9 months depending on, on the type of contract or the type of derivative which has been signed and which basically I am trying to buy because call option means I am going to buy. And when, when we go into call option and specially I will use that word um, and, uh, for the second time that the information or the discussion which you are having are all related to the European option and what is the exact definition of the European option versus -vis the American option, I will come to that. So, basically there is an expiration date or maturity date and for a certain strike price or a price to basically exercise. So, when I tell about the call option as per the definition, it is basically an option to buy buy a particular asset or a particular derivative based on the asset at a certain price at a certain time. So, correspondingly if you have a buy, an option to buy, so obviously there would be a put option which I just mentioned few seconds back. A put option is an option as I will read from this slide, a put option is an option to sell a certain asset. So, it can be the same type of asset, it can be a different type of asset, it can be derivative based on an asset, does not matter. Is an, is, an, is, a, is, a, is an option to sell a certain asset by a certain date. So, this date what I mentioned for the call option and what, what I, mean, I am going to mention or I am discussing about the put option, the dates may be same, may be different. They can be different if there are two different type of options on different type of asset, on different type of risks, on different type of, of maturities, prices, so on and so forth. If the the characteristics of the derivative, characteristics of, of the underlying assets are exactly the same in all the, all the phenomena, then obviously there would be some cases where the, the prices, uh, obviously prices would be different because there's, there, there is a, a buy and sell, there is a demand and supply for that, but the time to maturity may be same, same for many of the cases. So, a put option is an option to sell a certain asset by a certain date. That date which I mentioned is again the same same definition is the expiration date or the maturity date. For a certain price, the price is known as the excise or the strike price. So, what you have is two type of options, a call option and a put option. Now, fundamentally when you, when you consider these two types, obviously for a call option there would be a buyer and seller and a, for a put option there would be a buyer and a seller. So, if you, if I use the English word, there would be a buyer to buy, buy means the second buy which I am, word which I am using is basically for the future. So, initially there would be a buyer to buy and there would be a seller to buy. That means, there would be a seller for a call option and a buyer for a call option. Similarly, when I come to the put option, there would be a buyer for a put option as well as a seller for a put option, which means they would be a buyer to sell, sell means for future. 
and they would be a seller to sell in future. So, the initial the concepts which I, when I mentioned a buyer and a seller for a buy option and a buyer and a seller for a put option basically those the parties who are going into opposite contracts the concept of option will come up depending on the person who is buying that option previously. So, obviously, if I am paying some money to buy a, a particular option and for this case they, these are a call and a put uh, type of option which I am saying, then the obligation is on me depending on what is the value of the option at the date of expiration depending on which I can make a decision whether to exercise that option or not exercise that option. I will exercise that option if and only if it is beneficial for me. I would not exercise that option if it is not beneficial for me. So, if I basically I do not exercise that option, it means the initial amount which I paid because I was the buyer. So, the initial amount which I paid for the option basically that becomes a loss. But if I exercise the wash option, it means that the total benefit for exercising the option at the later date, that means the at, at the date of maturity is much more beneficial by doing it rather than not doing it that I will come to that uh, details later on within few minutes. An American option can be exercised any time at uh, to the expiration date. So, that it, say for example, the expiration date, date is 3 months. So, I can exercise that option any time before 3 months depending on what I think is beneficial for me or what I think is not beneficial for me. When I am using the word me, it means the person who has bought that option. While on the other hand, the European option, so, th so those European options are the characteristics based on which we will consider all the pricing. The reason being the demand and supply of the option prices or the demand and supply of the options fluctuate depending on the actual asset uh, because derivatives as I said are based on some assets. So, obviously, they would be demand and supply for the assets, they would be demand and supply for the options. So, depending on that, it is very difficult to find out the prices. Obviously, there are methods, but we would not be going into de detail in considering those methods. So, the European options as I was saying can be exercised only at the expiration date. So, the prices and all these things which are decided upon based on which the options are, are signed would be known for the European option, but for the American option it will depend on the demand and supply of that particular options and the underlying assets based on which the person who has bought that option will exercise if it is beneficial for him or her as I just mentioned uh, a few minutes back. Other examples can be a look back option, an Asian option, a Bermuda option, a barrier option, they can be different combinations of options. It can be exotic options, it can be vanilla options. But as I said that in when I started discussing this, this set of uh, concepts or options that I will only consider the basic concepts and obviously if you are interested you can read the book, the book being John C. Hull or other book and uh, uh, obviously you can do a, a detailed search of different uh, good papers, good books in, in the net and obviously and if you want to get in touch with me, you can definitely do so accordingly. Now, when we are discussing the options in the last two last slides, I mentioned obviously there was a call and put and also I mentioned that there is a strike price and the date of maturity. So, I will basically rather than going to the definitions, I will give some, some variables or symbols from them and then draw the diagram in order to make these things much more clear to you. So, we will denote the strike price by k. If you remember in the, in the concepts of forward and futures, we discuss the strike price with the symbol of k. So, this is x here. So, the, uh, this strike price x would depend on what type of options you have whether it is a call option or a put option, but we will use the different uh, symbol x to denote the strike price. We will also denote the, the underlying asset price. So, when I am mentioning the asset price is basically would, it is the asset based on which the derivative is there and this asset price will have a suffix capital T. So, what this suffix is when, when we denote the the price s is me basically means the spot price the price of today and when i start the clock depending on when the contract has been signed 
that will be denoted by the, the variable will be t and if t is basically to 0, it means it is the spot price as of today, as when the clock starts. And obviously, when the overall expiration happens, depending on the European option, the price will be the spot price. I am not talking about the, about the derivative of the options. The spot price will be capital T is equal to, uh, the small t is equal to capital T. So, this is basically the spot price at the time when the maturity happens. So, technically, if the, the market, the demand and supply of the market for the derivatives of the option is absolutely, there is no problem. So, depending on, on the price, so uh, it will, it will, should so happen that neither the buyer and the seller should basically make any profit and loss because in that case, obviously, there would be some extraordinary profit being made by either the buyer seller and in the perfect market, technically, technically, theoretically, it should not be there. So, this S small t is equal to capital T would be denoted by S suffix t, which is the underlying asset price at time t is equal to capital T. And this P is the option price. Now, this option price has nothing to do with how the price is fluctuating. So, let me clarify one thing. When I am mentioning that the, the strike price is basically the strike price x would be fixed and, and decided the day the contract is signed. This st, I'll, I have used the red color, I will still continue using the red color. This st is fluctuating depending on the demand in the market. And this p price is the price at which, at which the contract is being signed by the buyer and seller. So, you can, you may think that does it mean that the P for a call and the put are different? My answer is yes, because buyer and a seller would be for the call option also, buyer and seller would be for the put option also. So, this P is the option price which the seller gets from the buyer depending on the price which has been decided on which the option is being sold. Point one. Point number two is that for a call and a put for the same type of asset, the, uh, the call and the put price at which the option is sold can be different. So, what we will do is that later on when we, when we consider the problems or, or consider the simple diagrams to denote, we will denote P with a suffix for a put option, this is small p and p with a suffix of, of, of a c is basically for the call option and, uh, and, and, and technically as there is a buyer and seller for a put option, I will use the word B for a buyer, S for a seller. This S is you know, basically this S, green S which I am writing is not the spot price. Similarly, when I use the call option, there would be a buyer and a seller. So, this price is basically where the buyer is P, suffix P is the price which the buyer is, 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 is giving it to the seller and P C p suffix c is basically the price of the call option which um, uh, which the buyer is basically um, uh, giving it to the seller so this will become clear as we consider the um, the concepts so the the idea is like this in 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 in, in one of the places uh, let me use as room 1 and room 2 for for our our understanding in room 1 there's an asset and there's a price for that asset is being bought and sold. So, there is a demand and supply and there is a derivative for that asset in room 2 which we will call basically where we are trading this option based on, on the prices of the, of the derivative of the asset, it will be fluctuating and obviously, we will denote that option would have basically a price at which is, which is bought and sold depending on a, whether it is a put or a call. There is a strike price which is agreed upon by this with the seller and the buyer in room number 2 and obviously, there is, there is a spot price S suffix small t which will be fluctuating demanding, depending on the demand and supply and how we denote it, let me come to that. So, let us consider a hypothetical example. So, if I, there are two persons, there are two persons A and B 
or say for example, Ram, Ram and Sham or consider say for example, Muhammad and Ram whatever it is and we are considering the one of them is buying that option, one of them is selling that option. So, then the question would be first let us consider the long call. So, when I say a long call is basically I am trying to denote the profit from a long call depending on the buyer and the seller. So, obviously, if the buyer has a particular um, uh, profit or a loss, the seller would exactly have an opposite loss or a profit depending on our whether the buyer is making a profit or a loss. So, if the buyer makes a profit, the seller makes a loss and vice versa. So, let us consider the first example is the profit from buying an European call option on ACC the option price is P. So, this small p, I will use uh, the color say for example, uh, orange. So, this price P is basically the price which, which is being exchanged between the buyer and the seller on the day when the option is being signed and bought and sold. This we call consider as 5 and the strike price X, X which is fixed is considered as 140. And I want to find out that what is the profit or the loss for the person on, on a long call position. So, we will denote the ST which is the spot price depending on the time frame. We will consider that along the x axis as I denote it. I am using the color blacks because the diagram has been drawn accordingly. And along the, the y axis, I basically have the profit. So, this is the profit depending on the price and the uh, or, or depending on the fluctuating price as, as well as considering the price which the person has paid depending on the long call position. So, let us consider like this. So, what was the price which I had paid if I am on a long position? So, this is basically 5. So, let me consider as, as color red because this is a loss for me, I paid up front. So, this is 5. Now, it is an option I have bought, I have the obligation. So, let us consider this, the price was 140. Now, when the expiration happens, if the price is 130 or 120 or 100, the question is that will I exercise? The logical answer is no. Reason being that if I want to buy, I would rather go into the market, buy it at 130, 120, 100, whatever price is, and the only loss which I will make is basically the 5 rupees which I have paid upfront to the person from whom I have bought that particular option. Because if I exercise, which means that the, I have to basically go for the long call at a price of 140 even if the market price is much less than that. Now, when do I make a profit? When me means the person who is going on a long call position. Consider the price in the market which is ST. I am talking about the fluctuation of the price is basically S suffix small t. And at the, at the expiration S capital T, the price is 160. The question is that or the question would you obviously will ask yourself is that should I exercise? The answer is yes, because you have gone for a long call option where you have basically agreed to buy it at 140. If the market price is 160, technically it would mean what? In a very theoretical sense, I do not have that particular product, product means the derivative. I will buy it at 140 sell it in the market at 160 depending on the actual price which is 160 and make a cool profit of 20 rupees, 20 whatever the denomination of the currency is. So, in the case when for the long call position, if I am, if I am going for a long call and I have bought it at 5 and if and the strike price is 140, then I will only start making a profit after 145 because for, for a price of 142 consider would I exercise even if the price is I can buy it at 140, sell it at 142. That means I make a profit of plus 2, but remember I have already paid an upfront price of, of 5, consider minus 5. 
So, that means if I consider my total amount of profit it is minus 5 plus 2 which is minus 3. So, I will only exercise that option at the case or, or for the case when the price of that option is ST is basically 145. So, basically I buy it 140, sell it at 145, I have already paid upfront of 5 minus 5. So, the net profit to me is 0. So, after 145 I will exercise. So, my net profit would be I will use the gr green hashed area. So, the net profit will keep increasing depending on ST is as it is much more than x, x is the strike price. So, okay, I have not denoted here, or, or I did not uh, rather than making it cluttered, I did not. So, this is this value is p and p is basically for the person who has gone on long call. So, I will use the word l c long call. This value 140 is x is basically the strike price and I mentioned along the x axis I am basically measuring st which is the spot price and what is the loss? So, any value which is on the negative side of the x axis in the fourth quadrant this is a loss for me. So, I will use me means the person is going on a long call this is loss and this is the gain or profit whatever you say. So, if I combine it is basically the profit graph which I have. So, now we have considered a long call. So, there is an opposite party. So, the party would be basically considering that who had sold me. So, what is his, his or her position? It is a short call because the call is basically the option and if there is a long person who is going to buy, <coughs> there would be a short person who is going to sell. So, I and who has written that contract and he had sold it to me. So, now let us consider the profit function in the graph. I have not drawn the table. I will come to the drawing um, finding on the matrix based on which the calculation will be done later on. So, the profit from writing an European call option exactly the same thing for the ACC strike price is 5. So, I will first draw the profit and explain. So, this is the profit for the person who has gone on a short call. Oh, this is sorry, this is the loss. My, my apologies. My apologies, I am sorry. So, this is the loss in red color. Why this is a loss, I am going to come to that. This is the profit, which is the green color, which I will basically denote by gain as I have done it in the last slide. This is x, which is the strike price on the x axis. x means the strike price symbol. On the x axis, I have s suffix t, which is the spot price. Along the y axis, I have the profit. So, now consider the person would exercise, other person who has gone on a long call will exercise only after 145. So, the moment he or she exercises, it becomes a loss. So, it will be just the mirror image. So, if we add the long call and the short call, the overall profit and loss for both the pers person combined together is basically 0. Here, this value is basically price for the option, which is a short call. So, if you remember in the other diagram, just uh, the last slide, I have denoted p suffix for the long call and here I am using sim different symbols, but the prices are same. This is the price which is for the short call.
So, this is uh, basically for the price for the short call and in that case why he is making a profit because the person who has gone on long call would not exercise that option. So, whatever profit I make, I means on the short call position would be the upfront price which I got when I sold that particular option. So, if I combine so, the combination which is here and this is the x and y axis. This is for the short call. So, if I add it for the long call. Which means this portion and this portion cancel each other and this portion cancel each other such that the total profit for both of them combined is 0. This portion Cancel each other means positive and negative. So, this is the short call position. So, for the call there is a buyer and a seller and which I said is the long and the short. And again I am using the concept of the European also. Consider uh, from uh, profit from buying an European put option on, on ICIC, ICICI. So, that was ACC. So, I am just considering two hypothetical examples. Price is P is 6, that can be profit and loss depending on who is the buyer and the seller. So, I will use the color black. So, this is the price. So, price is 6 Indian rupees, and I will use the price cap small p with the suffix long put. And obviously, you will see in the, in the next slide, it will basically be the same price which who is gone on a short put because the short means I am selling, long means I am buying, obviously the, with a different sign, but the quantum of the values bit uh, of P suffix L, P and P suffix S, P are the same. Again, the same nomenclature along the x axis, I am denoting by S uh, capital T this uh, y axis I am basically denoting the profit, profit means the pro gain or losses. This value if you see the let me read it, if the strike price is given as 140 which is fixed when the contract is signed. So, this is the value of, of x which is fixed. So, if I am buying which means profit means the pro gain or losses. This value, if you see the let me read it, if the strike price is given as 140, which is fixed when the contract is signed. So, this is the value of, of x which is fixed. So, if I am buying, which means I will only exercise this put option, put, put options I will exercise in the sense that when now I have decided on 140. Now, will I exercise when the price actually in the market is 80? If I have not gone in the contract, obviously I would have sold it at 80, but as I have got in the contract and it is my obligation because I can exercise because I have bought it. The moment I see the price is 140, the contract price and the actual price is 80, I will I'll try to basically immediately exercise because the person has to buy it at 140 and not at any price lower because that 140 was the agreed upon price. So, the left hand side, the portion which I am going to mark in green is the profit or the gain, what gain which I am using. And the right hand side, when the prices are basically more than 40, 140, I would not. Um, because if why I would not, because if I go into the market, 
i i would basically be if it is 160 and i want to basically go for buying it so in that case i will try to basically exercise this one wait this is the loss now profit from buying a long put put option means which i am selling and why would i would not exercise because if the price is actually 160 in the other case i i said that i would basically exercise and sell it sell it at 140 and not at 100 which is the actual market price but in the other case when the prices are 180 and i have gone into a contract for 140 i would not exercise the option because let it be a loss loss being 6 rupees because i will go into the market and sell it at 160 at not 140 so for lower price i'll exercise because if i go into the market i'll sell at a lower price and for higher price higher means with respect to 140 if the price is higher I would not exercise it, I will go into the market and exercise it. So, this is the loss which is the red in color and this is the gain which is basically green in color. So, obviously, there is a long put considering I bought it, this put option there would be a person in the opposite direction who is basically writing it is in a short put for the same ICICA. I am considering price P is for which is basically the short one small p suffix s p is equal to small p suffix the long put price quantum is same plus minus would be there depending on who has bought and sold it the strike price is x which is 140 along the x direction i am measuring s t which is the spot price along the y direction i am measuring the profit and this portion is the gain which is the green one and this portion which is on the left which is in in the, below the x axis in the fourth quadrant is, is basically the loss now again why profit and loss because the person who has bought that option from me the moment he or she sees the prices are actually um, in the market and the person wants to basically buy uh, want to want to basically put put sorry sorry is basically sell and the person sees the actual price is 100 and i've got i means who is the, in the short put position we have signed a contract at 140 he or she will definitely sell it to me at 140 not at 100 because the person has bought that option so it will be a loss for me person who is going to short position and the other position and other case if the prices are greater than 140 the person would rather go into the market sell that product at higher than 140 and not at 140 because that is the contract which has been signed with that person with me so whatever profit would be that is the upfront price which I, which was paid to me for that option would be a profit for me. So again, if I we if I add up, I'll draw the x and y axis. So this is the short put. This is the long put. these are the graphs so i try to use a color say for example dark this is what let me check dark red so this portion when I add them for this 
long put and a short put they cancel and this portion when I add them together they cancel. So, overall cumulative profit and loss for both buyer and seller is 0. Now, we have drawn the graph. Now, we want to basically explain that with a simple equation such that if we have different time options, we can basically write the, write the overall profit function and keep on adding and subtracting them depending on whether it is a long put, short put, long call, short call. So, we will basically have four different simple so called, I would not use the word model, but simple equations depending on long call, uh, short call, long put and short put. Now, remember one thing, I will be mentioning few things about the prices small p. So, make a note of that and this if even if we add the price, do not add, add the price, the overall profit matrix and the profit function remains the same. So, now first we will consider the long position in a call. So, mark the two important keywords long and a call. Call means to buy, long means I am buying up buy. The overall profit value is for any price, we want to basically find out the maximum of them. But in case, so if I, if I am a long position, so let me go to the graph long for a buy. So, if I am considering this, there is a price P also and this is the price which I am paying upfront. So, if it is a long call, I would basically consider this. This is with a negative value. So, I will use the word with a minus. So, this was the loss. So, this was minus P long call. So, this is a long call. So, actually the equation would be max of S T minus X minus P of long call minus of P of long call. So, this 0 value which is being written is just a simplification, it would not matter in your calculations whether you bring minus P L on the left and right side because you want, want to find out the maximum between these two quantities whether you are subtracting and, and adding is not going to matter for finding on the profit function or the payoff for the long call position. Similarly, I use the different color and I and will come to this, this explanations later. I use the red color. So, if I consider a long position for a put option. So, I will basically go into the graph first. So, long position and a put option. So, long position and a put option, the price which was for buying is basically uh, a negative one. So, long means I am I'm, uh, I'm buying up front. So, long put option was a negative one. So, this is basically minus P L P. So, this equality which I have put here, if you can see, is, is the quantum value which are matching. So, minus L P minus P suffix L P. So, x minus S T minus P L P comma minus P L P. So, this was basically the long put position if I consider the this I am this color concept are just using to differentiate nothing to do with profit and loss. This is a short position in a call. So, it will be a minimum. Now, short position long uh, short in a call was minus P L C. So, obviously, it would be x minus S T plus P S C plus P S C. Now, remember one thing, the value wise, quantum wise, this value 
and these values are same. This is a comma here. So, let me make it more clear. These are same. The values are same. When I go into the short position, a short in a put position. So, let me highlight it, it will be better. Long call that is red in color. So, I will use the red one long put. This is a green color short call and this is a short put. What is the equation for that? Hmm. So, it was minimum S t minus x and obviously, I am selling is a profit. So, it will be plus P S P plus P S P. So, what values are same? Same means quantum wise, not the sign I am not considering. So, this P L P, P L P, P S P, P S P. Let me use a, a, a different concepts of drawing, nothing else. I am just putting a. So, these are the same. The black dotted or hashed lines and these black one bold one are same. Again same means quantum wise. So, whether you add 0 or do not the calculations would not change. Now, consider the diagrams. So, here remember the in the this the price is not being considered small p is not. So, if I consider I will use different colors here in order to make the differentiation nothing else. This is the graph. So, this portion of is, is p. I am not giving the suffix you can understand whether long or short buy or sell that is what I mean. Next is the green one, I am using the color green. So, again P P the payoff. Uh, the uh, the price being paid sorry p of we already have in the y axis now the question is that if we add let us add it will come out to the same the zero value so here x is basically the 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 strike price here you have st as the spot price at date of maturity and these are the p of so the profit 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 of it. And this equation which I have used here, they can be used interchangeably, no problem. Diagrams are to draw, 
and the equations are basically to draw the matrix based on which you can find on the cumulative one. So, this which a long position in a call and this I have not used the suffix here, this suffix are not here, I will just mark it with the black dot or a tick mark in order to make you understand. And this p plus and minus will depend on the price which is being obtained or, or, or which you have paid. Now, consider a trader buys a call option with a strike price of 45, whatever the denomination is, dollars, euros, Indian rupees does not matter and put option with a strike price of 40. Both options have the same maturity that is important. The call cost 3, put cost 4. So, dollar buy, the trader buys and mark the important words. buys a call and a put option. So, this is a call option, this is a put option. In both the cases, the person buys. So, let me highlight the concepts uh, which is uh, important. He buys. So, I will use a different color. So, buys a, a call and buys a put. Strike price, okay, I think because if you are using colors, it let us be much more specific. So, put option, strike price is 40. And for a call option, it price is basically 45. The call basically has uh, 3 price, put has a value of 4. So, let us draw on our diagram showing the variation of the profit. So, let me, you can definitely use programming also, but I will just go to the concepts of simple using a Excel and I will be referring back to the slides on and off. So, I will first discard these colors, uh, open Excel and I will switch from the PPT to the Excel as and we proceed for the discussion. So, I will zoom in for better visibility. And I will use S suffix T for the spot price. Let me logo it down. So, they are what? Let me go back to the slide. There is a buy is a call and buy is a put. So, buy in both the cases. So, this is a long position for a call and long position for a put. So, this is the equation which is the, the, the two which I have the first and the second. So, let me denote the spot price as say for example, 0 with quantums of 10. Okay. Now, I have what? I have a long, long call, long put. So, I will use long call, long put. So, let me use this here. It will be easy. Long call, long put. So, this would basically be the strike price. I will use the symbol x and this is the price small p. I am not going to the, the suffix part. Suffix means the long call, short call, long put, short put. So, long call uh, buys a call option 45 and puts a short order. So, long call 45, long put 40. Buys a call option with with strike price of forty five, long op 
call long call and the price is 3. So, long call is 3, I am basically buying it, so it is minus 3 for me. And here also I am buying it minus 4. So, this is I am basically drawing this is the pay off for the long call. This is pay off for the long put and this is the combined combined. So, let it be like. So, I have to basically draw these graphs accordingly. So, first so, the P of is what? In the first formula for the long P of for the long call. Long call is max S t minus x minus P max S t minus x. This minus is already there, so I can add it comma this. So, let me make it bold. So, first would be B 2 would be uh, fixed it, fix it B 2 is bo fixed, B 3 is fixed. Now, I come to the long put, long put will be max x minus x t. So, max x minus s t this is 4 is already minus. So, it will be and so this is done. So, I will now use uh, uh, fix the value of C 2, fix the value of C 3. So, let me check whether I have fixed the right values B 3 and all. Okay. Now, let me write the combined value. Let me remove the combined value here and then I will basically copy it. So, so now I this combined function is given. So, if I want to have it, so let me write it down, I will I'll, I'll draw all of them, so it will be easy. So, if I want to draw all of them, the graph. So, this blue one is basically for the S t, so I can remove it. So, if I want to watch only the individual one, no, wait, let me check, I think there is some error here. Just give me one minute. It does not look nice. Yes. So, if I make make I want to draw the payoffs of the combined case.
to this is the combined part. Now, let us basically check in case if it is a long call with a long put, what if I replace with the short put? Short means I am selling, so obviously it will be plus 4 I will come to the combined only and for the long short pair for the short put it is a P of I will basically finish it uh, for a short put, short put would be minimum ST, minimum minimum S T minus X. So, S T would be this minus S plus this comma this. So, this will become dollar fixed C 3 dollar fixed this dollar fixed. So, if I copy it. So, in this case the combined would be accordingly from the next class. Thank you very much. Thank you.